Hello guys, and and welcome to the show. Every time I get into conversations with religious people, what I'm being constantly asked is, if there is no God, how did everything come to be? How did life come to be? How did everything from the hair to the planet to the sky actually come to be? And I reply by asking them, without God, do you think that would be a natural, natural explanation? When you go into a lab and you conduct some titration experiment, you don't pray to God to get you the average data value. Or when you draw the water cycle, you don't you don't draw, draw a old bearded guy or some cat or some dog or anything. You just do it, you know, because you know water can condense without without a god or evaporate without a god. You know, it is basic physics. So how far back can we go in understanding the universe without invoking God? And it happens that we can go as far as the very beginning, as far as the very beginning to the Big Bang. For some people, Lawrence Krauss needs, needs to be no introduction. But given that some some people would, would watch this actually do not know who he is, uh, and are not familiar with his work, I will try to do that. You know, he's a he's an astrophysicist and the author of the universe from nothing. Basically, writing about the empirical possibility that our universe could have emerged from nothing, absolutely nothing, no Yahweh, no Allah. Oh, me like Bomerigo, none of that. <laughs> so, so, this is my first interview of the year, and this is a test interview to actually see how how to conduct these in- interviews. I have some, uh, it has some ups and downs. It's easy to share, it's easy to go viral, but I don't think you can actually capture the very essence of a conversion v- uh, remotely, you know. I don't think so. It, it's better in person, it feels better in person. I, this was great, you know, it boy to be better. And uh, I want to make a huge shout out to everyone who, have, who helped in doing this, who helped in making this uh, podcast possible. The great Tunde Ola and every single person who donated to this very moment, you know. Combined with this investigation, uh, combined with this podcast, I have been investigating supernatural claims in Nigeria. And on February 1st and 2nd, 2022, I'll be making a public call out at Jebu and Blagi for anyone who has any evidence of, of their belief in the supernatural. Because of the recent spiking in human ritual, this is what I'll be doing next month and a couple of this. I'll be having some very interesting guests on this podcast and I think we should convert it into audio. I don't know. Because I feel very comfortable with an audio than a video, you know. You know, it, it thanks a lot and uh, and this one didn't. So, if you enjoy this video, subscribe. You know, it means a lot. And some interesting things are coming. Thank you. Yeah, when when I meet people, you know, when I when I chat with people, you know, I, not not a lot, but but I do. I they ask me about oh, about what created everything, you know, like you know, I talk about science and religion with people, and uh, and I would like to actually go uh, go as far back, you know, as far back as uh, as how I don't have to, have to actually invoke God. That that is my main focus here. How far back I can actually go without invoking the premise of God, you know. So uh, how far back we can go? Yeah, without invoking. We can go God. back. Well, I mean, in principle, we can go all the way back to the beginning without invoking the premise of God. We don't need it, but um, uh, but we certainly can test our understanding of the universe back to at least when the universe was a small fraction of a second old. We can make predictions and we can compare them with observations, and they agree. We understand the universe within the first second or so after the Big Bang, and probably within the first millionth of a second after the Big Bang. Um, before that, we, we may not be able to test our ideas directly, but our, our, our laws of physics certainly work back to a time, a very, very short time after the Big Bang, 10 to the minus 43 seconds, probably. Mm-hmm. That's a, a decimal point with 43 zeros and a one after the Big Bang. But we, but certainly we can theorize, and 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 it's certainly possible for universes to come in. Well, need to invoke the presence of God. That doesn't mean you 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 can't do it. But there, but it's not as if the physics points to any evidence for creation or design. And as far as we can tell, so far there's no need to invoke God, and um, and there's never been any evidence in the laws of physics for for the need for any divine or supernatural intervention in the in the universe and um and so that's just the way things are 
or, or uh, you wrote a, you wrote a book on on uh title of the book you know uh a universe from nothing you know and uh, and I will actually know you know that where it actually get tricky for me is is defining nothing you know so uh, so what is what is nothing well it's it, I wrote a whole <laughs> book about it because it's not so easy yeah um it depends on you know people most people don't think very carefully about that idea they for many people nothing is just empty space with nothing in it the, certainly the bible suggests that anyway the bible suggests nothingness is a, a, a void a, a empty empty nothingness um and that's one kind of nothing where you just have empty space and no particles or no radiation just eternal blackness um another Another kind of nothing is no space and no time, no literally no universe. Um, and that's another kind of nothing. And I talk about how space and time themselves can come into existence. The third kind of nothing, which is a little more extreme, is no, no, nothing in no space, no time, and no laws. You know, no, no, nothing, no, no, no laws of nature. And that's um, that's more extreme. But but certainly. The, I think most people's definition of nothing is is no space. You can certainly have spaces and times pop into existence due to the laws of quantum mechanics and relativity. Um, but in any case, you're so it depends what you mean by the definition of nothing. And I think most people who quibble with my definitions of nothing have not really defined it well for themselves either. Uh, uh, in your book, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson actually said that, you know, nothing uh, is not nothing. Like, as long as you can describe it philosophically, uh, uh, nothing is well, something. Well, you know, let me jump in and say that physics has changed our definition of nothing in some sense, because we understand that out of no space, uh, out of no uh, out of empty space, particles can pop in and out of existence. So, so you know, for some people's nothing is empty space. Other people's nothing is uh, something is space filled with stuff, and it turns out the laws of physics allow you to go from one to the other. So they're not as they're not as distinct as you might think otherwise. So 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 physics has really changed our definition of 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 nothing, and and that's okay. Okay, all right, all right. Uh, do you think uh, when I try to picture it, you know, when I try to picture what nothing is, you know, I, I can see feel something there, you know. When I, well, it's very hard. To, it's very hard to picture, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but it's, but do you it's, think it's, it's just uh, you know, pic picture something and then picture the absence of that? I mean, <laughs> it's hard. To, it's like thinking of a person, a person's absence by thinking about them not being there. But it's hard to think of them not being there without thinking of the person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, do you think the reason why we can't do that is because uh, you know? Uh, uh, my, our mind is not actually wired to do that. The way we can't imagine being dead, you know, living people can't imagine being dead because, you know, to, to, oh, yeah, to, well, to it's imagine like, that Yeah, well, people say, what's it like when you're dead? And I say, well, what was it like before you were born? Yeah, no, and I, what, what, how did it feel before you were born? Yeah. And, um, and it's hard to picture. That's the whole point of science is it forces us out of our comfort zone to picture yeah. the world in ways that we might not be comfortable doing otherwise. Uh, uh, can can you give me a brief summary of uh, a very brief summary? You know, like I'm very sure some most of the people watching this that we, that, we, that watch this and, and listen to the podcast won't I won't be really familiar with the uh, uh with the topic you know of physics and uh, most people are not you know. And can you give give me a brief summary of 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 uh, how 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 things came into being from from the Big Bang to planet? You know, it, just a brief summary. Oh. <laughs> Well, I've written whole books about that too. I mean, yeah, yeah. Big Bang, book, look, the yeah, point yeah. is that, that I, I, the Big Bang was initially hot and dense, and everything we now see was once contained in a region smaller than the size of an atom. Which is the material was just—it's just amazing to think of how compressed and dense it was. But it rapidly wow. markers a few milestones in the first minute or two. To, at the beginning, there were no atoms. There were no. There were not even protons and neutrons. The particles that make up atoms. There were elementary particles called quarks, and they were flying around in a hot, dense soup of stuff. And then nuclear reactions caused uh, the protons began to form around it when the universe was about a millionth of a second old. 
and nuclear actions cause protons and neutrons to combine together to make the nuclei of light atoms, hydrogen, helium, and a little bit of lithium in the first, uh, um, uh, in the first uh, three minutes or so, or five minutes of the history of the universe. But even then there weren't atoms because the temperature then was 10 billion degrees. It's hotter than Africa in the summertime. And, um, and uh, uh, it took a long time for the universe to cool down to when neutral atoms would form. And that took about 300,000 years. And only then did protons capture electrons and form neutral hydrogen atoms. And then the neutral atoms began to be, because they weren't being repelled by electricity, gravity began to take over. And, and, and very small lumps of material began to compress and combine together to form the first galaxies and stars. And that took about four or 500 million years, probably, before the first stars formed. And then galaxies began to grow and, 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 uh, and stars began to burn in, in uh, their nuclear components of hydrogen, turning into helium and then into carbon and then into nitrogen and then to oxygen and silicon and iron and all the things we see on Earth. And some of those stars exploded. And in our galaxy, there have been many supernova explosions. And they were necessary because our sun didn't form till about four and a half billion years ago out of material that had been processed in other stars. So there were heavy elements, the heavy elements that make up the stone behind you needed stars to make it. And the carbon in our bodies needed stars to make it. And so um, our galaxy formed about 12 billion years ago and and has been and stars have been living and dying in that time and about four and a half billion years ago our our sun formed and the earth formed around it about four and a half billion years ago and i guess the rest is history <laughs> uh, so can you give me a sense of how, how you measure how, how we measure time in space you know like the first one of the person uh the first person that actually had me in certain of my podcast actually asked me that question that his name is AJV, you know and he actually told, asked me if uh, how how was uh how was uh, uh Einstein able to figure out the distance in space you know and and he was doing it from his own room you know can you give me a sense of how how that can be done how, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't understand that last how, one. Give you a sense how, of what? We, how we figure out time, no? How, figure how out we distance figure out, and time oh, that's, out of that's a good, that's a really good question. Yeah. And we figure it out by doing experiments. Mm -hmm. We look at nature and see how nature behaves. Mm -hmm. And we then try and understand it. And then we try and predict what will happen next. And we try and see if we're right or wrong. And if we're, if we're wrong, then we throw out the, those predictions and that idea. Um, and we keep refining our theories so our predictions get better and better. But it's all based on experiment and observation. And that's a central part of science. It's not based on revelation or imagine, imagining things. Uh, it's, based on, it's based on looking at the world as we see it and doing experiments and observations, and then trying to and processes that allow that to happen. And so uh, what the picture I just gave you of the history of the universe is based on on more than a century of careful observations by many people of the universe. Mm, mm, uh, uh, the, uh, I watched an interview of yours on on YouTube and I uh, about some couple of days ago, and uh, he said he said something about on closer to truth. I think he said something about physicists giving up on uh, uh, physicists giving up on 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 why the universe is the way it is because of something uh, something called the anthropic principle. You know, can you oh, okay? Yeah, can you explain that? You know, I, I was I, I was told I was told to actually to to actually ask you, ask you to shred that, that argument, you know, <laughs> the way why the word well, is well principle. I mean the anthropic principle, it's not really a principle. The idea is that and it, it's quite possible that there are certain properties of our universe that could be quite accidental. And it could be. Um, well, let, let let me let me make it this way. People may say, why do we live on the earth? and not and not mars or 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 jupiter and the answer is that life like you and me could not exist on mars or jupiter so it's not too surprising we find ourselves having evolved on the one planet that has conditions that are hospitable for life like us to exist it's not a conspiracy it's not as if the earth was designed for us we happen to live on the earth because it has water and organic materials and the, and 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 uh, and enough and and not and 
and an environment that's not too extreme for carbon based molecules to to merge and eventually replicate and have a metabolism so if there are many many planets in the in the universe and there are there there are planets around almost every star and there are 100 billion stars then you might say um where would you expect to find life and you'd expect to find life on those planets that are hospitable to it yeah well the anthropic principle goes one step further and says well maybe there are what if there are many universes what if there are you know many different kinds of universes then maybe some of the properties of our universe which seem very crazy <laughs> are not really crazy at all it's just that we happen to evolve in that in our universe because it had those properties and and it was possible for the earth to form and life to exist and if the properties have been different the earth wouldn't have formed and life wouldn't exist and you and i wouldn't be having this conversation yeah. it's not it's not magical it doesn't suggest any 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 uh, design it just says maybe maybe there are certain parameters of our universe which we can't explain from fundamental principles they're just accidental but they happen to be appropriate for life and maybe that's why we evolved in this universe of course, it, it's predicated on the notion that there may that there there might be many universes, and we don't know if that's true or not. Oh, uh, uh, so so uh, uh, do you, which one do you think is is most plausible? This sanctuary, many worlds, or, or a theory of everything? Of, of everything, you know. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, the point is, we it's all beyond the physics right now. They're good. Their string theory is well motivated, but it has not been particularly successful in describing our universe maybe one day it will be but i'm agnostic about that because I, I really don't know and and i think you know physics at the forefront um it's always that way we you know we don't know what's what, what, what we don't know what we don't know <laughs> and therefore it's premature wow you tired there's certain parts of string theory there's certain parts of string theory that seem that seem very well motivated um except for me the extra the notion of extra dimensions um is uh is not it seems to me to be not that well motivated so i find it hard to to uh i find i find it hard i'm suspicious and i'm skeptical hmm. but who knows maybe it's right okay uh, uh one of the major questions you know one of the major questions that i that, that, I've, been, that I've been battling with is i've been dealing with is you know how to actually unite Nigeria, you know. The, I wanted to actually divide this uh, conversation into two segments, you know, and this is the major segment, you know. Uh, your book is not available in Nigeria. I don't know how how, how that ha happened, you know, but your book is no way available in Nigeria. You know, there are, there are some, some African countries where your book are not available. You said my book isn't available, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I would have thought people could go online you know the world is open to the internet and i i would have thought yeah go online and and try and see the ebook which is a way of seeing it even if you can't get the physical book okay i wish it was possible to <clears throat> to have it there yeah. uh you know I, I i i'm happy if i'm happy whenever it can go into a new country so and be translated so people can can um can appreciate it but it's it's not, unfortunately it's not beyond my control okay okay uh all right then one of the main focus my main focus here is you know oh the role the role uh science play in uh, science plays you know or well, science played you know um, in uniting uniting the west you know what role do you think science played in uniting the west because i think that is one of the most you know important question that we have to ask in nigeria right now you know how to actually unite the country uh, what role do you think science plays in, in uniting the West? I didn't. I didn't hear your question. You froze. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, what role do you think uh, science played in uniting uniting uh, Western nations? You know. I, well, I, uh, science should be play a great role in uniting people. Science is independent of 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 every anyone can do science who wants to and it's independent of, of country of geographic location of gender race creed anything if you look at the say the large hadron collider the big accelerator in geneva 
It's been built by over 10,000 physicists from hundreds of countries, and they all speak different languages and have different religions, but it doesn't matter. They're all seeking a common goal, and that's what's great about science. It, it should unify us as human beings because <clears throat> it's really the common desire to understand why the world is the way it is and how it operates. It's something all humans want to know, and of course, science, the technology that results from science is beneficial, not just for economies, but for keeping people safe and healthy. And therefore, it's it's vitally important that that science play an important role in 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 all of societies, whether it's in Africa or in in, in North America. Uh, we need we need a scientifically literate public. Your country could do much better economically if you had people, more people who are educated scientifically, yeah. because that's the key out to get out of poverty. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, the the issue we've been having is I I, I don't know I don't know I, I I'll be having Stephen Pink on my podcast uh on when 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 Wednesday you know on Wednesday I I uh, the issue we've been having is you know is the cultural aspect of it you know how to actually how to integrate uh mm. science into cultures you know I think that's the problem we've been having and and it, it has seemed impossible to actually do it right here in Nigeria. Well, I mean, well, I mean, cultures get. Culture and politics and ideology get in the way of people of people um, doing the right thing often, and it's something we have to try and overcome. And science helps us overcome it. I think by asking questions. Mm -hmm. The scientific method is useful well beyond science. It's it's it, the scientific method involves making a prediction, testing it, going out and testing it, and 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 seeing if it works. And if it doesn't work, throwing it out, and keep do, keep repeating that over and over again. And it's relevant for everything, the way we do politics, the way we do everything. And so using empirical methods and science is something that everyone should should try and base a lot of their decision making on and societies should try and base their political policies on. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I saw your uh, your video on your debate with uh, William Lane Craig, you know. That was the first video of yours I actually, <laughs> I actually saw like on YouTube, you know, it was sent to me. Uh, that, that is this guy that actually debated with William Lane Craig. And he said something that, that uh, farmers don't go to uh, to uh, uh, to their girls to check the rain, you know, they don't, they don't uh, consult rainmakers anymore. Uh, they they, they well, go it, find yeah. the meteorologist, you know, and that is not a very common thing here, you know, people still believe, you know, in <laughs> very... Very, it's well, unfortunately, people believe in astrology, and it's it's nonsense. But it's been around for five thousand years, and people still believe it, even though it it doesn't work. It's, but we've learned that that you know people are remarkably willing to believe. We all want to believe there's these these strange things, and and if we if we didn't naturally want to believe them, then we wouldn't need we wouldn't need um uh. We wouldn't need science because we'd all be natural scientists. Science didn't come naturally. It took it took thousands of years before science um, developed and and changed the world. It wasn't. It was only four hundred years ago that mo modern science really began to take over and um, and change the world. And once it did, you boy, look and look what what's happened in the last four hundred years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is a major part. You know, yeah, yeah. Another aspect of it is morality. You know, or, or, or uh, what? What say? Do you think? Do you think? Uh, you know, science could, could be the final realm. You know, at least reason. I think. I think. I think it's reason. You know, reason as uh, the, with the capital R. Uh, do you, what role do you think it actually plays in? You know, in, in morality. You know, in 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 finding morality, in understanding morality. What do actually at least? You know, do you think? Do you think? Uh, morality could be objective if we all are bad by the by the laws you're of reason. Oh, sorry, yeah. I'm sorry, you froze again. Okay, all right, all right. That, that, that probably is my internet. You know. uh, do you think morality could be objective if we both uh, are bad by the laws of reason, reason and logic? I, I think the problem, the 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 problem would be in ethics, you know. But but I think, do you think this could be? I, I, I'm sorry, I really, you keep <laughs> cutting, cutting in and cutting out. Yeah, yeah, that was my internet, you know. <laughs> okay, I'll come again. Do you think morality okay. could be objective if we all abide by the laws of reason and logic? Oh, oh I see, it's morally, uh, morally objective. Well, I'm not sure. 
I mean, morality. If we based our morality on reason, and most of many of us do, you have to use more than just reason. You have to use empathy and 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 other things to get morality. And part of it is cultural. There's no doubt about it. So you, so there's an old statement: you can't get ought from is. Um, but you can get very close. And I think if you use logic and reason to, in order to make what are moral decisions, then, and use empirical evidence, if you don't use those, then your moral decisions, I think, are irrational. And so, so uh, in order to decide, you know, I, I often say if people didn't, some people say they need to believe in God not to murder people. But then I say, if you didn't believe in God, would you murder your neighbor? And most people would say no. And I say, okay, there are other reasons for that then. Um, we all realize that if we went around murdering each other all the time, then we'd have no stable, stable society. And so we agree together to try and create a society based on laws and, and we work. And so in some sense, we use reason to predict what will happen in making our decisions. But, uh, but, but I do think that, that we, I'm not sure about universal morality because, um, you know, I think it really is to some extent culturally dependent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was what I actually thought. No, that was what I actually thought. I, I, to some extent, I think, I think the difference could be in ethics. You know, the different, the difference in in what we actually think about the world, about what you know how to behave could be in ethics. But I don't, I haven't seen why a reason why morality couldn't be object, objective if we are, since we are reasoning beings. You know, since we all use our minds. And uh, uh, so actually find out at what key, is thrown up. At the key point, at the key, you always freeze at the key point in your question. Wow. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, uh, that, that was in my internet, you know, that was in my internet. It's, it's weak when, around this time, it's stronger during the midnight I, I, you know, my, my basic comment is that, you know, to some extent, I think if we all abide by the laws of reason and logic, I think everyone in the world, you know, as long as, uh, 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 our, our focus is in is on how to reduce pain, you know, how to reduce suffering. And well, you know, I think if we if we use our reason and 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 we are endowed with empathy to understand others' conditions, and I think I think that that sort of golden rule to some extent <clears throat> makes empirical sense. Actually, the platinum rule, not the golden rule, the not do unto others as you would have them do unto you, but rather do unto others as you think as you think that they would like you to have, do unto them. Um, <laughs> because I think that it works both ways. You realize if you do that to others, then they'll do that to you. And in principle, therefore, the world can be a, a better place for you. It's kind of selfish as well as altruistic. And so I think it makes sense. And it's, it's hard for, it's hard, of course, for us to, to, to feel that way all the time. Um, uh, because you know uh we all have emotions and we other have other things that get in the way as someone once said hume again i think reason is a slave of passion um uh and uh um you know i think that that you know we have to recognize that and that's why science helps us helps us second guess one of the things about science is the recognition that you yourself can be wrong yeah and to understand that you can be wrong, and to try and find out how you can be wrong. Yeah, yeah, but but uh, the emotions, you know, the emotions you mentioned, but it, it isn't isn't emotion a consequence of of the conclusions we you know, we come to, you know, like when you when you feel some way, you know, not just feelings, you know, emotional emotionally about something, isn't the last frontier still reason, you know, because the reason I I think it is a consequence of uh, of the conclusions you come to. About, about reality. And and that's you still use your mind, you still use reason at the end of the day. Well, I think what I think and there's a lot of evidence that people we use we're we're our brains are pretty tricky. We often use reason to come to the conclusion we want to have in the first place. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> and we have to be aware of it, aware of that. And 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 it's so often second guessing yourself, I think, is a really good thing to do, and it's something that science teaches us or yeah. should teach us to do yeah, yeah and um and it's important to realize that we are motivated by things that sometimes we're not even conscious of so
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. That is what I think and uh, is most important. The power of doubt, you know. I was at a church today. I, I went to meet up with someone. I, I went there to meet up with someone. I was at a church today. And uh, and uh, what uh, what uh, the pastor was basically preaching is obedience without... without uh, wow. Nope. <laughs> okay. You're still there audially, but looks like video-wise you're gone. Okay, so there you are. You're back. Yeah, yeah. That, that was the, uh, the timer. Uh, I was in the church today, and what the pastor was basically saying was uh, 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 that that you should obey without, without questioning. And I think around here, that is not the that uh, that that is not. No, the, I don't think. I mean, I I don't think you should. Obviously, I think you should question everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. at some point. I mean, so you know, you it, you know, there's some things you. <coughs> You, that that you have to accept on some sort of faith. I mean, you have to accept that that tomorrow it's going to be light during the day and dark at night. Uh, you know, and or you have to. I, you know, I I I know that gravity works, and 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 I and it's and I could question about whether I could walk out my window or not, but I know I better not because yeah. I, I'm going to fall. And so some things I think you you learn on the basis of experience, and other things you just have to turn, you know, we can't be experts on everything. And so at some level, you have some expertise and decide when or when you when you're willing to accept their arguments and when you aren't. But but blindly accepting things is 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 generally I'm um, Uh, um, that actually tripped up a little bit. Uh, I think understanding that your life, to some extent, you know, isn't isn't it up to your own decision? You know, it isn't up to you. You know, some some aspect of your life isn't up to, isn't isn't by your own choice. You know, it actually ac- actually actually leaves your it leaves you of the of the pressure of of actually living life. You know, so uh, do you uh, are you a determinist or 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 you believe in uh, free will? I don't believe in anything. I just think things oh, are right. likely or not likely. All right, all right, all right. Uh, but, but I think, look, I think the point is <clears throat> free will is largely an illusion, but it's a workable illusion. At a fundamental level, I think the laws of physics are deterministic, even the laws of quantum mechanics. But the world is a complicated place and so complicated that that it's hard to determine all of the causes that produce an effect. And so effectively, we live in a world that's indistinguishable from a world in which there's free will. And therefore we have to act. It's, it makes sense to act as if we live in a world in which there's free will and take responsibility for our actions. Even if you understand that there are a million causes for any effect that may be coming around, but ultimately it's, as I say, indistinguishable from one, from one in which we have free will. And so we at least have to take responsibility for our actions. So, so, uh, uh, what, 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 what are your thoughts on, on necessary illusions, you know, positive illusions, you know, uh, are, are there some things that are true, but are not, are not necessarily, you know, needed, uh, uh, to be believed, you know, that, that, that do not actually warrant being preached around, you know, being pestered to people is, is free, free will the idea of free one of, one of them. Well, I missed a lot of what you said, but wow. I think the point is that we, we, uh, <laughs> Well, I, what, what I you know, you know uh, I think Christopher Hitchens once said something like, "Do you believe in free will?" And he said, "I have no choice." Yeah. <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, uh, what I thought on necessary positive illusions, you know, some things that are false, you know, like some things that are false, you know, but actually it's it's us in living in an organized society. And there are some things that are basically true that you think aren't necessarily needed, you know. You know, like, like, like for me, it would be the idea of self-esteem. You know, a a pretty propped up vision of yourself. You know, we have this uh, uh, a knack for actually, uh, uh, you know, propping up a vision of ourselves. And I think, mm-hmm. I think, uh, to some extent, you know. That is just an illusion. We are not as good as we think we are. I don't think we are just. Oh, yeah, well, none of us. Yeah, we have. Well, yeah, we <laughs> we're not as good as we think we are. Probably sometimes not as bad as we think we are either. But yeah, I think I think it's easy to fool yourself, and and 
that's the easiest person to fool is yourself oh. and we also have we always have to be on guard about that but on the other hand we also live our lives you know we couldn't live our lives without some vision of ourselves that helped us get up in the morning and go to work or whatever so those, some of those illusions are useful in the ter- evolutionarily useful because they allow us to get get through the day but we have to realize that they're just illusions nevertheless yeah, yeah that is that is very important you know and 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 that is what i have been trying to actually get together on the idea of ethnicity and and you know uh uh that, that we have a we actually have a uh a, a pretty a pretty a pretty bad problem around here and i think i i think it is i think it's also showing up in 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 the u.s also i know i know you live in canada but i think it is showing up in the u.s also uh how, how do you think we we could actually break ethnic boundaries you know I don't know if you've given this any kind of thoughts, but I think it's- Well, look, I'm not, look, I, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, of course I have, I mean, to some extent, but I'm not an expert and I, and I don't claim to have all the answers. Once again, uh, the more you learn about the world and the more you learn about others, the more you can, you can empathize with them and appreciate the things of value. So I think, I think educating people and, 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 and also science and realizing our common humanity uh, helps overcome those ethnic, ethnic and cultural differences that otherwise separate people. Um, yeah. But it's hard, and you know, it's it's hard. It's not an easy road to take. But um, but I, I ultimately, you know, I, I'm an educator by training, and and and. And uh, I therefore think education is the best thing we can do. I can't help but think that the more people learn about the world, the more willing they are to accept uh, things that are different than what they're used to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that, that is my view. So you know, that is what I've, I've I've actually been trying to do. So I think I will make your book available. Uh, I, I'm trying to make well, a- it. It's important. Yeah, I'm trying to make your book available in Nigeria. You know, I've been I I I I message pu- publishers, and I think it is possible for me to actually import some of it. You know, and actually sell on. Uh, and, well, well, good luck with that. It's not an easy. It's not an easy task, and yeah. to get publishers nowadays, especially in the co- in the current world. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so that would be it for now. Uh, uh, thank you for for joining me on the podcast. You no, know. thanks a lot. You know. Well, thanks. I'm glad it finally happened, and I'm I'm uh, sorry it took so long. And I appreciate you overcoming the technical challenges, and I hope it's useful. And maybe one day I'll get to see you in person. And we will. There. Not maybe we okay. will. <laughs> we will. I know, I know you want it to happen, and I hope it can happen sometime. Yeah. You take thank care. You. Yeah, thank you. Okay.